Well, now that we've taken a look at planet conquering aliens, let's look at the heroes made to stop them. Star Fox's own Fox McCloud against Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. No, we are not using the toy Buzz. We are using the real Buzz from the cartoon and games that the toy in the movie is based on. Yeah, how random of a matchup would it be to put a little toy against Fox? What are we, Cartoon Fight Club? Space Ranger vs Space Cadet. Who's more fit to protect the galaxy? This is Fictional Fights! For many years, the Space Rangers at Star Command have defended the galaxy from the forces of evil. But one ranger stands out much more than the rest, Captain Buzz Lightyear. Buzz has been in Star Command for over 20 years and has gone through all the typical military protagonist stuff. He was a loose cannon who didn't like the strict rules at first, but through some random event that doesn't have any relevance, he changed his mind. Buzz began to take things seriously and quickly climbed up the ranks in Star Command, becoming one of their most valuable rangers. So much that he even got to write half the rules in the mission manual. Jeez, I guess hard work does pay off. Big guy, subsection Delta's the dress code. Incidentally, why can't we have nose rings? Because nose rings are for punks, little mister. Well, if you can take on Zerg alone, I don't see why XR can't get a nose ring. I was just asking a question. I'm not the one getting a nose ring. Buzz has had multiple decades of military training and has gained great skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat, mainly karate. And he's been outfitted with the most epic space uniform ever. Buzz's suit is designed to adapt to the environment so no corner of the galaxy is too much for him physically. These suits come with all kinds of crazy gadgets. The big red button lets Buzz spread his wings and fly with a jetpack. This jetpack also has a grappling hook inside for carrying large and heavy objects. He can also shoot powerful lasers out of his forearm. They can be used to defeat foes or seal doors shut. And if he needs more power, he can just dual wield some fancy laser pistols. However, unlike the laser in his arm, these pistols have limited ammo. He has rocket and grenade launchers that can destroy asteroids, but he doesn't carry these around all the time like the rest of his equipment. Buzz can certainly hold his own on the ground, but he didn't rise so high in the ranks from on-foot combat alone. He's also an expert pilot and flies a light-speed rocket called the Star Cruiser. This ship is full of lasers and enemy detection devices. It even has a grappling hook of its own to reel in other ships. It's made of a laser-immune alloy, so it'll take something stronger to destroy it, like a bomb! Perfect. But no more. <laughs> Luckily, he has a smaller backup spaceship called the Alpha-1 that he can escape in to avoid harm. Pretty smart if you ask me. Buzz is an excellent strategist and a pretty decent shot with his laser, pulling out whatever comes to mind when taking down a foe. He's good. But I'm better. With his decades of experience and training, he's bound to have pulled off a few impressive feats, even if he is a bit cocky and stubborn. Buzz may be a regular man, but that suit of his has really come in handy. Its durable armor helps him tank blast stronger than his own lasers, which are already capable of blowing the tops off of buildings. He's casually tanked being in the center of an explosion that covered an entire wasteland. And he survived plenty of other deadly attacks. It's surprising his foes can even hit him considering his speed. Star Command jetpacks are capable of keeping up with Star Cruisers which can travel to other planets in mere minutes. Buzz's reaction time is so fast that at the very last second he was able to pilot the Star Cruiser out of the path of a beam from Zerg's evil-powered Unimind. The laser from Zerg's Unimide can travel to planets across the galaxy in seconds. If you remember from Zim vs. Kerro, even crossing a galaxy in six months already makes you hundreds of times faster than light. Dodging a laser that can travel that distance in mere seconds makes Buzz millions, possibly billions times faster than light. Well, they don't call him Lightyear for nothing. Speaking of the Unimind, Buzz's mind is so strong that he was able to overpower it when it was infected by Zerg's evil, which made it capable of controlling an entire galaxy. Heh, 
Did you really expect anything less from the guy who's determined to go to infinity and beyond? Not at all, but there's another space cadet we need to discuss who could possibly reach beyond. Ah yes, Star Furry's own Yif McCloud from my favorite game, Star Rule 34. Wow, three furry jokes at once, and you didn't even wait until Fox's analysis began. This is a new low for you, Vic. I'm disappointed. I have no shame! Anyways, meet Fox McCloud, son of the awesome pilot James McCloud. Even from the start, Fox was noted as a very talented pilot. He joined the Canarian Defense Army Academy and became a cadet. However, on one flight, an evil piggy betrayed James and led him to his death. Peppy was the only one to make it out alive, and he soon enlisted Fox to create the new Star Fox team. The hot-tempered Falco and genius, yet annoying, Slippy, joined Star Fox, and together they have protected the Lilat system from Andross's evil. And how do they do that? With some of the coolest space devices I have ever seen. Their ship of choice is the R-Wing. It can fly at hypersonic speeds and shoot rapid-fire lasers. The R-Wing can perform many tricks to make flight easier. It's capable of pulling quick turns to change positions with the enemy and get behind them. And it can perform a speedy spin move to deflect and avoid enemy fire. It's called the Barrel Roll. Do a Barrel Roll! Fox can even charge up the laser in his R-Wing for a more powerful shot. However, this ship can only take so much punishment. Bumping into too many walls can bring this baby down in no time. Luckily, if he's in a zone too dangerous to fly, the R-Wing can transform into a walker. The R-Wing isn't all Fox has in his vehicle arsenal. There's also the Landmaster, a powerful tank that can target multiple foes at once. This powerful death machine is used for taking out much larger foes. He has the Gyro Wing. However, this vehicle is mostly used for stealth, and it's much slower than the R-Wing. But Fox can't fly everywhere all the time. Luckily, he's capable of holding his own on foot. For ground combat, Fox carries a rapid-firing laser pistol. He has some cool abilities he can perform too. The Firefox lets him browse the internet for the coolest cat videos. Um, Vic? The Firefox we're talking about is the one that lets Fox dash in a powerful stream of fire. Not the internet browser. The Fox Illusion lets him dash forward faster than the eye can see. He sacrifices that powerful fire for a speed so fast it creates after images. Fox also has a reflector that can block and repel any projectile back at the foe. However, Fox cannot move or attack while using it. And the reflector doesn't protect him from melee attacks or physical things still tethered to the attacker, like a grappling hook. It's not like he needs any of his weapons or abilities anyways. With nothing but a staff and some barrels, Fox was able to take down a T-Rex by himself. Yeah, yeah, we know it's called a Saurian, but it looks like a T-Rex, so who cares? Fox has taken down large fleets of foes in his R-Wing, and frequently has to bail his team out of trouble. Especially Slippy! Come on, you frogger reject! Protect yourself, please! You want a piece of me? Ah! He's able to outpilot the deadly and feared team known as Star Wolf. What an original name. Together, Fox and his team have taken down gigantic foes, and they can come up with strategies on the fly. On more than one occasion, Fox has single-handedly defeated the villainous Andross. He was able to pilot the R-Wing well enough to evade Andross's self-destruction, all thanks to a vision from dear old dead dad. Don't ever give up, my son. Jeez, what kind of drugs were in that explosion? Protecting the Lilat system is a piece of cake when you're someone with Fox McCloud's piloting skills. Now, if only that frog could get some decent piloting skills. See, this is why Overwatch picked Tracer instead of him. He's lucky Fox is so generous. Calm down, Vic. Let's just get this battle started and you'll never have to think about that toad again. Alright, alright. I'm cool. Good. Now, let's see which one of these space rangers will win in a fight to the death. It's time for a fictional fight! Understood. We're on it. Oh, what about my crab? Guess there's no rest for the best. We're counting on you. What's up, guys? Leopold the Brave here, giving a shout out to the animator of this fight, Rampage Animations. I told you guys he'd improve. I told you guys he'd improve. And look at this. He's back and better than ever. Animating Buzz vs. Fox. This is going to be exciting. 
So shout out to him. Go check out his channel. The link's in the description down below. Let's get on with the battle. Well, that fight certainly went to infinity and beyond. Eh? Eh? Get it? Aww. How come you're the only one who gets to make terrible jokes? I don't make terrible jokes! The only joke around here is Slippy's piloting skills! The same goes for Fox when comparing him to Buzz. While he's a skilled pilot, Buzz Lightyear has him so outmatched that it's not even funny. Sure, Fox has flown through some tight spaces and can maneuver well with his R-Wing, but Buzz's experience overshadows anything Fox has done. Buzz's Star Cruiser can pull sharp 180 degree turns faster than Fox can even do a barrel roll. Not to mention, the Star Cruiser is much faster. Our wings have hypersonic speed feats from being able to outfly explosions. But that absolutely pales in comparison to the Star Cruiser and Buzz's speed feats of being able to avoid the Unimine's beam. At millions of times faster than light, I never once in my life thought I'd be saying that Disney Pixar's Buzz freaking Lightyear is one of the fastest characters in fiction. In fact, Buzz's universe is so fast that they don't even use regular speed limits. They use light speed limits. I memorize one page every night. I'm up to section 5, subsection beta. Light speed limits. More than just a good idea, it's the law. It wins out in raw power too! Buzz's Star Cruiser is capable of tanking lasers and blasts comparable to the R-Wing and Landmaster without a scratch! The same goes for Buzz's suit. Lasers bounce right off it, and he tanked a city block size explosion without taking any damage. Star Command jetpacks can keep up with the Star Cruisers, so it's not like an on-foot battle would lower Buzz's chances in terms of speed. Buzz and his partner alone were also strong enough to nearly rip a gigantic mountain mutant out of the ground. Even though that they didn't succeed, the fact that they got close trumps any of Fox's strength feats. Buzz would have no trouble hitting Fox with his trick shot accuracy. Plus he's good at pulling out strategies in an instant. I guess you could say Buzz's pullout game is strong, like mine is with the ladies. Hehehe. <laughs> ha! Oh please Vic, you can't pull out what you can never put in. Okay, ouch. Just finish the results already. Heh, <laughs> alright. While Fox has a reflector, it can only block projectiles. It won't be saving him from Buzz's karate or grappling hook anytime soon. Looks like Fox is gonna be seeing stars! The winner is... Buzz Lightyear! To infinity and beyond! Get ready for the next battle! Done yet. Don't close the video. Don't close the video. We're not done yet. <clears throat> As you may have noticed in the Jin vs. Sasuke trailer that I just showed, it didn't have the date on the screen like the previous trailers. This is because the release date is sort of a bit unknown now as the animator got busy with college, but don't, don't give him a hard time over it. College is very important. And trust me, the animation will be worth it. This guy makes art, and art takes a lot of time. So while you do have to wait a bit longer than I anticipated, I promise that it will definitely be worth it. The total runtime of the episode without the animation is already 19 minutes. The analysis, the results, a bunch of extra stuff, the intro, just all that together is 19 minutes, plus the animation will bring the episode to over 20 minutes, making it our longest episode yet. So be patient, give the animator some slack, and go to the Fictional Fights community on Google Plus and place your predictions for the next fight. Leopold the Brave, out.